Uh, next speaker is uh, is a wonderful candidate for state senate in New Jersey. Uh, New Jersey, I think, has approximately 99.3% Indians at this point. Uh, in its, uh, that's a joke, but uh, but obviously New Jersey is a is a terrific state for the community with an incredible history and incredible future. So, uh, Rupanda, mate, the uh, the floor is yours for three minutes. Thank you so much. Uh, I want to thank uh, you, Raj, and the uh, and the folks who put together this event. Impact Deepak Raj, Neil Makija. Thank you so much for having me. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Rupande Mehta and I am running to serve in the New Jersey State Senate. I have spent the past several years reaching out to voters in my community and hearing what they have to say. And it is very clear that this district, my district, District 25, is ready for a new leader, a leader who shares our values, who will go to Trenton to fight for us and not come back empty handed. Um, we're at a point in time where the state of our democracy is under attack. We need strong progressive leadership that will fight for everyday families and protect our values. This is the year we finally defeat the political machine in this district. My story is a story of dreams. Born and raised in Mumbai, India, I came to the United States in 2002 in search for a better life. Leaving behind a life of vehement abuse, I came searching for freedom and a chance at survival. After getting my MBA in 2004, I came to New York and started working in the corporate sector. Shortly thereafter, I met my husband, a Canadian man born to Jamaican parents, and we got married. In 2012, our only daughter, Sophie, was born. And in 2017, I became a proud American citizen. In 2018, I ran for a county office here in New Jersey, which is called the Freeholder, and came within two points of winning. I am running because I believe representation matters. Simple. Across the country, everyone is trying to elect firsts. New Jersey is a state with the third highest South Asian population, not quite at 99, but getting there. Yet if elected this November, I will become the first South Asian woman ever elected to the New Jersey legislature. It's 2020. It's about time we elect people that represent us, that look like us and share our values. When I look at the current state of our legislature, I see a lack of women a lack of members who are working to change the status quo and are willing to fight for progressive values. This is why I'm running. Now more than ever, I'm ready to take on the political machine in this district. It is time to oust the most conservative member of the state legislature. Just this year, as our nation faces such unprecedented times, we watched as my opponent failed our community yet again. He ran around the state mocking basic science, not wearing a mask, and calling to open the state up with no regard for public safety and the countless New Jerseyans tragically lost to COVID-19. I'm running to stand up for New Jersey families from all walks of life. And if elected this November, I will work with both sides of the aisle to ensure that I fight for all constituents. This is not about Democrat or Republican. This is about sensible leadership. It's about survival. It's about an independent voice who will not sacrifice any more lives, who will listen to data and science. We deserve a leader who will fight for us every day, who will be accessible to us, and who will lead with common sense. With your support this November, I hope to be that leader. Thank you once again. And to know more about my campaign, please visit my website, www.rupandemeta.com. I'd also like to give out a very special shout out to Assemblyman Raj Mukherjee, who's here on this call, and Senator Vin Gopal, my dear friend, for all their help with my campaign. Thank you very much. Moving on to an old friend of mine, the, uh, I will say, obviously, this is a bipartisan or nonpartisan organization, both Impact and uh, Gopio, uh, and everybody tonight, uh, uh, but for our next speaker, Neera Jantani from, uh, is a Democrat, but we're happy to have State Representative Neera Jantani from Ohio, a state senator um, who's, who's also running for the state Senate, uh, and, our, and our lone Republican speaker tonight, and somebody who I think who was elected at a very young age, which I'm sure he'll talk about. So uh, Neera, the floor is yours for three minutes. Over to you. Well, you know, thank you, Raj, and, and to the Gopio leadership for, uh, you know, having me uh, tonight and also uh, you know, Raj, I met uh, when I was a intern on the Hill and he was a Kansas state representative. And, and so great to, to see you again. Uh, uh, my name is Neeraj Anthani. I, I've in my third elected term as a state representative in Ohio. I have the privilege of uh, serving as the second Indian American 
uh, state elected official in Ohio, the first Indian American Republican. You may have known my, my Indian American predecessor, Jay Goyle, um, who was in the House uh, before me. And uh, I am now running for the state Senate. Uh, I would become the first Indian American state senator uh, in Ohio history. And, and also, like Raj said, uh, I'm right now one of three uh, Indian American Republican elected officials uh, in the country, uh, along with uh, Harry Rohr in Connecticut and, and Subby Kumar uh, in Tennessee. And, and as we know, uh, you know, while our community certainly leans uh, Democratic, uh, it's incredibly important to have support on both sides uh, of the aisle uh, so that when our community faces issues, we can have advocates uh, both uh, on the Republican side and uh, the Democratic side. And so, uh, you know, I work very hard uh, uh, to, to work across the aisle uh, on things that we have common uh, and to advance, you know, our community. Uh, look, you know, my story is, is just like uh, the story of everyone on this call. My parents immigrated from uh, Gujarat uh, in 1978, became citizens in, in 1984. My father worked as a computer engineer for 30 years and, and lived out the American dream. I think that, you know, for our community, uh, the American dream is a very uh, real thing uh, because we've lived it. Uh, and so we know that, you know, we must work together uh, to ensure that uh, every American, every Ohioan uh, has the opportunity uh, to achieve their American dream. And for those of us who are on, uh, you know, the, the younger side uh, of, of elected office here, uh, we are going to carry the torch. Those of you who, you know, were the immigrant generation, you know, blaze the trail uh, to uh, do uh, what we are able to do. Uh, and we only stand on your shoulders. Uh, and it's our job to, you know, carry on the Indian American values, the Hindu values uh, that you all instilled on us uh, into the future. And so, uh, it's truly an honor. Uh, Gopio is a, a great organization. Uh, thank you for all you have done for our community. Uh, you know, I'll drop my contact info in the chat and, you know, anything I can do for you uh, in Ohio or, or elsewhere, you know, please do let me know. Uh, so just, uh, and then we'll go to Neeraj. We're going to do reverse order, you know, quick story about what was your spark? When did you, when did you emotionally even know, hey, I could be, I could put my name on the ballot. Yeah, great. Thank you, Raj. And, and great question. You know, I, uh, have been interested in politics, uh, you know, pretty much since I was in high school. I interned for, you know, my congressman on the Hill and uh, and, and also in, in the district and worked on, you know, different campaigns. And, and it's, you know, for me, you know, very simple. Uh, you know, politics reaches every segment uh, of our life. And, uh, you know, we have to be uh, at the decision-making table uh, and otherwise our, our voices will not uh, be heard. My first political memory was, in 2000, when I was nine years old, uh, watching Bush v. Gore and the hanging chad and, and all of that. And I remember, uh, you know, just having a great passion for, for politics uh, ever since then. And, and, you know, that led to, to me being elected when I was to 23 to the, to the state house. Next is a, um, is a state representative from the great state of New Hampshire, Lata Mungapudi. And uh, uh, over to you, Lata, the floor is yours for three minutes. Thank you, thank you to Gopi, and thank you to Impact. And I see some familiar faces, Keisha Ram, Neera Jantani, and Raj Mukherjee. Um, this is um, my fifth term. I'm running for uh, my uh, seat as uh, District uh, 35, Hillsborough County, Nashua, New Hampshire. And um, I am a first generation immigrant. I came to this country in 1985. And uh, if somebody talked to me in uh, 85, 86, was, my goal was to get my PhD in behavior and neurosciences, go back home, start a school for the autistic children and uh, work uh, as a speech language pathologist uh, back in India. Lo and behold, you know, here we are 2020, I'm serving as a fifth term legislator, first Indian American to be elected in New Hampshire. All of you know New Hampshire is uh, well known for its first in the nation primary. So I, in uh, my career in politics started as a PTO uh, mom, PTO president, and then got elected to school board. And I realized how important it is to be uh, at the policymaking table to advocate. And advocacy is a big core of who I am. And my father was a Gandhian uh, follower. He was a Satyagrahi. He would say, if you see something injustice, 
happening around. It's not about your comfort. You got to speak up, stand up. So that's, that's who I, I am. And uh, especially now, you know, when we go back, we have such a beautiful connection. Uh, the Indian uh, cu culture, nonviolence movement, um, you know, Gandhi was inspired by Henry David Thoreau, who is very close to Massachusetts, where I am uh, close to. And, you know, then uh, Martin Luther King getting inspired by Gandhi. So it's a full circle. And now more recently, we had the Satyagrahis like John Lewis, uh, Cummings, Eliza Cummings, and most recently, RBG. Who could argue that, you know, anybody? So my biggest uh, thing that I always talk to is, you know, I'm a woman, I'm brown, I'm first generation immigrant, I'm a Democrat, and I'm very vocal. So, you know, uh, I don't hesitate. We do have, you know, New Hampshire has the largest, um, fourth largest uh, house of prep, so we are dime a dozen. And, you know, uh, when you look at it, we are 400 of us, but how do you, you know, nobody can miss uh, to see who I am because I stand out. I'm comfortable in my skin, figuratively and literally. So I'm not willing to sacrifice my core values or shed my skin or my faith. So that has been my uh, center. And uh, I have stood, you know, we have hosted several events uh, for uh, presidential candidates. And, you know, more recently, Cody Booker stayed overnight. I had the distinct privilege and honor of making him Mysore Masal Dosa and uh, um, <laughs> Upma for breakfast. So it is a very tough, tough situation right now. I feel it, I hear it. I have been in New Hampshire for 30 plus years and some of my colleagues have said to me, go back if you think so uh, highly of what India offers, why are you here? Go back to where you come from. I've also spoken on the well in terms of, um, you know, death, repeal of death penalty, uh, resolution against racism and bigotry. And uh, so, you know, we have to be who we are. We have to believe mm -hmm. in core values. And my goal is, how, what do we say to my children? What, what will my children tell my grandchildren, great grandchildren? When we were going through tough, challenging times, your grandmother just sat and said nothing, or, you know, we were comfortable for ourselves. So, sure. that's the key thing. so uh, it's the lifetime. And I had the distinct honor of introducing Kamala Harris in New Hampshire. Yeah. So I thank you. And COVID times are tough. And I want to see more of uh, people who look like me to be in different states. And let's work together, shine the bright light, be the bright star. Well, I love that. Do you have a, do you have a quick, uh, um, you know, th again, you already talked about it, but please keep it to 30 seconds, just about your path to, to, to kind of, maybe I could change the question a bit. Like, what was the spark? I know for my life, I remember when I was like, maybe I could be the politician. You know, I was certainly a confident guy, but it still took me a long time to think that I could be the elected. Do you just give 30 seconds on your moment like that? You know, it's... Uh... A woman needs to be asked because I, you know, that's what I've learned that you don't trust your own skill. And I had very good friends. And like I said, I grew up as a, uh, you know, for a Satyagrahi as a father. So um, when a friend of mine who was across the street, uh, lived across the street, was a state rep, would ask me to participate in holding the sign. And one of the senators asked, hey, there's an uh, opening in a state uh, rep, and she said, can you run for it? I want you to run. I said, Betty, why me? Do you think I can do it? Absolutely. If anybody can do it, you can do it. Sure. I didn't look back. So somebody asking me to, be, you know, and for me, it was believing that a first-generation immigrant do it, you know, somebody asking me to run for an office and serve. And for me, that was an opportunity to serve my community. So, you know, that's his history, like they say, right? So that was yeah. the, somebody asking somebody, ask, you know, and being mm. involved in this.
uh, process. Absolutely. It's very important. Terrific. There's a lot of sociological research that supports what you just said. That, that's, that's, that's really a, tr a tremendous story. The New York legislature, State Senator Kevin Thomas, uh, who is a surprise guest tonight. So uh, if, if we can give you a couple minutes here, Senator, uh, who's, a, who's a good friend of mine and somebody who out of the blue uh, sort of shocked the establishment by winning. And of course, we're going to add to your ranks here in New York. But uh, uh, Senator Thomas, the floor is yours. Thank you, Raj. Uh, thank you, Gopio and Impact. Uh, two great organizations out there to help the Indian Americans in the political world. I'm Senator Kevin Thomas, and I proudly represent the sixth senatorial district here in Nassau County. I grew up a child of immigrants who came to America for a better life. Their experience paved a pathway for me to become an attorney where I fought to advance civil rights and protect everyday families from abuse and exploitation by predatory lenders. Throughout my career, I witnessed the rights of hardworking everyday people being stripped away. So when I won in 2018, just like Rod said, I became the first Indian American, first South Asian to be a senator here in New York, unseating an incumbent who was in office for four decades. My constituency sought change and they got it. My colleagues and I were able to improve the lives of so many New Yorkers. We passed laws to protect our environment, protect child victims, help our immigrants. We increased funding to our schools. We improved our healthcare system. We funded programs for our veterans, protected our women's right to choose, eliminated barriers to voting, increased funding for our roads and bridges, protected our communities from gun violence. You get the picture, we chose to serve the people. I currently serve as the chairman of the Consumer Protection Committee. I have the immense responsibility to oversee the welfare of 20 million New Yorkers. And that includes legislation to hold social media companies accountable for when they collect and sell our data. But my first responsibility is to you, my neighbors and constituents. In my first term, I brought more funds and resources to our schools, villages, and roads than ever before. And when COVID hit, I fought to get as much testing, PPE, and food distribution as possible to the district. I will continue to work hard to reduce the cost of living while increasing our quality of life. I'm honored to serve in the New York State Senate. And just like in 2018, I need your help because there is national Republican money coming into the district to unseat me. $1.7 million is how much they're spending on attack ads against me over my vote on criminal justice reform. So my campaign needs money. It needs volunteers to phone bank and text and make sure your friends, family, and neighbors are registered to vote and take them to the polls with you on election day. Thank you so much and help me win this. Thank you. That's well, terrific, Kevin. And by the way, you are uh, you hit time eight seconds early. So that is a true public servant. Uh, but uh, we do wish it, we do wish you well. And uh, I can say as a New Yorker, you are in a you're in a tough fight over there. So if people who are on this call and are interested in some candidates to support support everybody tonight, without a doubt. Uh, but uh, and you know, Kevin, Kevin's doing a great job there. Uh, let me quickly say Jeremy Cooney is a longtime friend and he is a terrific public servant. Uh, he'll tell you his story, but he's worked at state government. Uh, he ran a valiant race last time. He's going to get over the top this time, and we'll be proud to add to um, the South Asian caucus up in Albany will uh, hopefully Im improve. So uh, uh, soon to be Senator Cooney, you have three minutes. Uh, well, thank you, Raj. Uh, it's good to see everyone here. I see lots of friends. and I want to, of course, give special thanks to Kevin Thomas. Uh, he and I first met uh, in 2017 when we were both running for the state Senate. Uh, and I'm so proud that he blazed a trail for, for, for myself, but for so many other South Asians uh, in New York. And I hope to make him proud and, and join him in the state Senate in just a few short weeks away. Uh, I'm Jeremy Cooney, despite my Irish name, I am from India. Uh, I was adopted at a very young age. I was born in an in a orphanage in, in, in Kolkata, uh, in Bengali, uh, and, uh, raised here in upstate New York in Rochester, Kodak Town, uh, and um, had a great opportunity to, uh, as, as Raj noted, work for a number of elected officials. I've worked for members of Congress. I've worked for two governors uh, here in New York, Governor Patterson and Governor Cuomo. 
uh, and then recently served as the chief of staff uh, for the city of Rochester. Uh, the mayor of Rochester and I both went to law school, so I'm a, a lawyer by training. Uh, but my commitment is to give back to the community that helped raise me. Like so many other public servants on this call tonight, it's about serving others and giving back. You know, I'm so grateful for the opportunity to be in this great country. I'm so dismayed uh, by what I see on the federal side right now. And uh, I always tell folks here in Rochester, we can't control uh, the politics of Washington, D.C., uh, but what we can do is we can stand up for the rights of New Yorkers and we can make sure that we are representing a diverse and inclusive community. Uh, I am running a campaign uh, that has been nonstop for three years. Uh, we are ahead in the polls. Uh, things are looking really, really good. Um, this is an opportunity to break barriers. There's never been uh, a South Asian, let alone an Asian, ever elected to state office from upstate New York, outside of New York City. Uh, so we're, we're pretty excited to join, uh, hopefully, uh, Senator Thomas and uh, Senator Liu, who's uh, Chinese, uh, to have uh, a, little, a little AAPI caucus in, in Albany. Um, but listen, I, I wouldn't be able to do this without the support of folks like Raj and Deepak and Impact. Um, Neil has been a tremendous support uh, from Impact. Uh, and we actually did an event with Andrew Yang just last week. Um, so we are really building our heritage and we are looking forward to representing one of the fastest minority groups in this country, one of the most educated and business oriented and scientific minded uh, minority groups in this country. And it's important that we have a voice at the highest level of government, whether it's Kamala Harris at the top of the ticket or those of us in state and local office. So thanks for being supporters uh, and uh, thanks for learning about myself. Thank you. Bye. I could barely hear Jeremy. What he said was send him lots of money urgently because it would only be the great irony that in New York, the second Indian American elected has an Irish name. I mean, could there be a greater American story than that? Uh, but we, we wish you very, very good luck, Jeremy. Thank you. I think we heard the bulk of your remarks and, um, you know, we, we do we do wish you the best. Uh, it's a great story. Uh, last but certainly not least, my old friend Keisha Ram from Vermont. She's got an extraordinary public service story uh, that is really in a way just beginning, but she's already a trailblazer in, in many ways. So uh, Keisha, over to you. Thanks so much, Raj. And I wanna thank Dr. Abraham as well. I believe he was gonna have a small gathering for me in March while I was on my way back from India. Um, and I did make it to India and yet we definitely canceled everything else after that, uh, given the state of affairs in this country. Um, for those of you who may not know me, I am in Vermont. You have a Vermonter in the land of maple syrup and Ben and Jerry's and more cows than people. Um, you actually have an Indian American and it took me a while to find this community, um, but it really found me. Um, and I think of people like Lata, you know, who's been an incredible mentor. I just got engaged after I won my primary um, to become the first woman of color in the state Senate in Vermont. Um, and I went to get my wedding dress in Nashua, New Hampshire and went and had Italy's with uh, Latha G and my future mother-in-law. So you have to know if you don't, we're a family, we take care of each other wherever we are in the country. Um, and that has been just an incredible gift to me up here in a very cold and isolated place to know that you all are behind me. It has kept me going, um, you know, and similar to some of our other speakers and the original theme, um, you know, I served eight years in the House of Representatives in Vermont in my, my entire time in my 20s. So I was 21 to 29 when I served and then I ran for Lieutenant Governor and I have a name no one can pronounce. Punjabi Jewish American grew up in an Irish pub in Los Angeles and uh, you know got a great showing for being such an unlikely candidate left politics for four years and came back and have just had such a resounding victory um, in a in a in a 13 way primary for six seats coming in second solidifying my place uh, in Vermont politics and that's really thanks to all of you. So I just am incredibly grateful. I'll leave my website so you can learn more. And I'd love to stay in touch because uh, there are about 300 to 500 Indian American families in Vermont. So, you know, we're here. We want to connect with all of you and we hope you'll come visit us. 
um, as a Punjabi, you know, sometimes my family says that this area looks like Kashmir to them. So I found my home up here in Northern New England and, you know, please come visit anytime. I'll be happy to show you around. Thanks so much. Um, you know, there's been a couple questions in the chat room and since, uh, since our Vermonter was patient and had to go last, I'm actually going to call on you first uh, uh, and and ask uh, maybe for a couple comments. Uh, you know, one question was sort of what outreach has been. You know, I, I think maybe the spirit of the question was, can you can maybe describe how the outreach you did in the community that probably enabled you to be a public servant? You know, in your case, I know that you were elected at a very young age, so maybe you could just give us, you know, 30 seconds about sort of what your path was to being. Uh, in public service. And then also there was a question about kind of what folks on this call and what Gopio and Impact can, can do to help. So uh, we'll start with you, um, uh, uh, Keisha, and then we'll, uh, anybody else uh, who, on our panel who wants to jump in, uh, just uh, put it in the chat and I'll call on you. So go ahead, over to you. I appreciate that, Raj. It's like when you start the vote at the letter Z, because usually it starts at the letter A. So much appreciated. Um, you yeah. know, when I started, when I was 21, I think um, I remember two things. We like math in India. And, you know, there were two very important things that when you knock on someone's door, they remember 70% of what they say to you and only 30% of what you say to them. So listen and pay attention to the name of their dog or where, what grade their child is in school and follow up. And that will earn you lots of votes. I challenged incumbents when I was 21 who are much older than me. And I won by the largest margin of any challenger in the state. I doubled their vote count. Um, so, you know, that helped me. The other thing I remembered that was math is that 90% of what you communicate is body language. So wear the same color as your campaign sign, show up with a smile on your face. You know, I, I actually look dressed down compared to all of you, but in Vermont, this is like very dressed up. So, um, you know, just sort of work to fit in and make people feel comfortable. And I think I would just add in the pandemic, um, you know, this year having such a resounding victory, we had a friend in Tamil Nadu make campaign masks and hats. I should have brought them on screen with me, but everybody loves the Indian cotton. They love the look and feel of these garments. We paid them obviously for this work because you can't get a donation internationally, but it was really nice to have a piece of India that's now sort of floating everywhere in Vermont. And I highly recommend that to candidates who campaigned in the pandemic. 